have the victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. His name is Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the victory. Come on, everybody, sing it. Whoa, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we have the victory. Oh, in the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan. Satan, you got to flee. Oh, tell me. Tell me. Congregational song in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. It's the old song of the church. Come on, Shiloh, help me sing it. Oh, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious, precious Jesus. We have, we have the name. We have. The victory. We have the victory. Right there, say we have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory. Take it out, say we have the victory. Come on, everybody. Come on, you ought to stand up all over the room. And let's have a little church for a little bit. The songs that never get old. Whoa, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have, we have the victory. the victory, you ought to say hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We have the victory in Jesus. Let us all stand for our call to worship. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord 
will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footway his way. Let's give God praise for his word. Let us receive our worship leader, Trustee Rosalind Beth. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. Today's scripture reading will be Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel should neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this time forth and forevermore. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we've all made it to the 31st day of January, 2021. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy for waking us up this morning. For starting us in our right mind, Lord. And Lord, bless us, each and every one of us that's just standing in need of prayer. Bless those that are viewing us and those that are in the house of the Lord. Lord, watch over, keep us, and guide us, Lord. For we all need you in different ways. Lord, bless us. Lord, lift us up where we need lifting. Lord, guide us and lead us. We're leaning and understanding on you, Lord. Lord, be our provider and our guide. I ask blessings over each and every one, those near and far, those that are still traveling on the highways and byways to get here, Lord. Bless those that are lying in hospitals, Lord, for recovery, Lord. Bless those that are at home that are sick and shut in. We ask just your blessings, Lord. We need them, Lord. Bless all the students who have gone back to school, Lord. Watch over and guide them. Lord, we ask a special blessing over Shiloh Baptist Church and Pastor Blackett as he leads us through today, Lord. We ask you to watch over each and every one of us. We ask these and our blessings in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise all over the room. Come on, let's give God a praise if you're happy to be alive this morning. Hallelujah. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Come on, I can't hear you, Shiloh. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. A move of God. A move of God. Is on the way. Is on the way. Say it again. A move of God. A move of God. Is on the way. Is on the way. Hallelujah. <laughs>
see you move. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. installation ceremony has been rescheduled for Sunday, February 14th, during the 10.15 a.m. worship service. We're asking for all deacons, deaconess, trustees, and heads of all ministries to attend this service if possible. The advisory board meeting has been rescheduled for Monday, February 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the church. Heads of ministries, please submit ministry reports to the church clerk at clerk at shilohbchartford.org by the end of the day on Tuesday, February 9th. Sunday school is back in effect. Our group class for Sunday school using direction guidebook will start in February, in February occurring every two weeks. Join us on February 14th and February 28th from 8.45 to 9.30 a.m. for our virtual Zoom class. Please call Nakia Pickney with the Christian Education Department at 860-836-1436 if you have any questions. The church quarterly meeting has been rescheduled for Saturday, February 20th at 10 o'clock a.m. at the church. 
We're asking all attendees to arrive early due to the COVID-19 protocols that we're asking to ensure that our members are safe during this meeting, which include temperature checks and contact tracing. To recap Shiloh's COVID-19 protocols, everyone is required to wear a mask that fully covers mouth and nose while in the church building. Get a lift. We're encouraging members and guests who use a wheelchair or a walking aid, such as a cane or a walker, to start using the, left, the lift located in the front of the sanctuary to enter the church instead of using the ramp at the side door in the back. The lift can be accessed by using the front doors on the west side of the church. Over the next few weeks, handicap signs will be placed in front of parking spaces located near the west side entrance for your availability. The graveside service and committal for Kathleen A. Francis, sister of our brother Bill Ellison, will be held on Wednesday, February 3rd at 11 o'clock a.m. at Cedar Hill Cemetery, located at 453 Fairfield Avenue in Hartford. Those who would like to attend can get more information by calling Common Funeral Home at 860-688-22. Oh, oh. The Epsilon Omicron Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is now accepting applications for their annual scholarship. The Foundation for Educational Opportunities 2021 Scholarship Program will award seven candidates with a $2,000 scholarship for their first year of college. The deadline is March 31st. For more information, go to akahartford.scholarship.app. Do we have any first time visitors today? Any first time visitors? Well, I guess we're all family here. Turn and wave at your neighbor, say hello, wave to our online guests and say hello and have a great day. One, two. Come on, Shiloh. Let's sing the song together. Come on, everybody. Anybody expecting great things from God this year, this month, this week? How about this day? Anybody expecting great things? Hallelujah. After all we've been through, God is still going to give us great things and do great things in our lives. Amen. Anybody believe that? Right, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please welcome Nia Mitchell as she helps us worship this morning. Hallelujah. Amen.
expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things.
Worship God for a few seconds. If you expect the great thing, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. Hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. When everybody's singing, I'm expecting great things. Say great things. Come on, Shiloh. God has great things in store for us this year. Say, I am. I'm expecting. Oh, 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 oh. I'm expecting great things. I don't know about you, church, but I'm expecting great things. I'm As we prepare for the word. As we prepare for Reverend Blackett to come give us a word. Let's just bask in the glory. Come on, just for a few seconds. Let's just worship God. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear the fruit of your lips. Let me hear the fruit of your lips. Come on, let's speak that love language to God. Let's let him know how much we appreciate him. Let's let him know that we are ready for our great things to come to us. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. No more music. Just the voices, all three voices. I, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Give me a little bit of that. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Hallelujah. I'm expecting. I'm expecting oh, great things. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm expecting great things. Come on, real big. Great things. Great things. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, are you expecting something great from the Lord? Come on, praise him like you're expecting something great from our God. Hallelujah. We declare that great things are happening for us today. Hallelujah. Great things are happening for us this week. Great things going to happen for us this month. Great things going to happen all year long. Come on, praise God for the great things. For the great things. 
Hallelujah. We greet you with the joy of Jesus Christ to those online and in the sanctuary. And we declare emphatically that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord today is coming from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse number 26, concluding at verse number 38. Luke chapter 1, verse number 26 through verse number 38. When you have it, those that are able, would you please stand for the reading of the word? Those that are able to stand today. The word of the Lord reads like this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we bless you and we worship your name this morning. We thank you for the great things that we are expecting in our life. We thank you, O God, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house one more time. Father, we thank you for the songs that have been sung to bless your name. So, Lord, as we go deep sea diving into your word, we pray, God, that we come up with revelation, that we come up with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Hide me behind the cross. Let none of me be seen, but all of your glory revealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For a few moments, I just want to talk from this thought. I wasn't expecting this. I was not expecting this. See, I am amazed at the notion of how God sees me. I'm in awe of how God describes to me who I really am. I'm grateful because I have my own opinion of who I am, and sometimes that doesn't line up with who I am in God. It doesn't match how God sees me for himself. The way I would characterize who I am is in direct conflict of what God would say about me. I would say that there is nothing to me, but God would say, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. See, there is a real battle that constantly goes on in our heads where we are fighting against what God has said about us and what we say about ourselves. What is so disturbing, my brothers and sisters, is that we would reject the positive affirmations just to wallow in self-pity and self-destruction. One of the most notorious tricks of the enemy is that he feeds us with words of depredation and eradication so that we can't possibly think that we are better than where we are right now. But can I suggest to you today that you don't have to engage with anyone that wants to dismantle the essence of who you are for their own pleasure. 
You are not required to entertain people that are insistent on demolishing the beauty of who you are. For the Bible says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possessions that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God said that you are chosen, you are royalty, you are holy, and you are God's prized possession. So regardless of what someone has tried to put in your head, know that you are better than what they have tried to make you out to be. You, my brothers and sisters, are God's greatest creation. So therefore, act like you know who you are in God and dismiss the disparaging remarks people try to label you with. See, we, we live in a world where systems are created to keep us in a box. These systems are created to make us feel inferior. These systems are designed to incarcerate our innovation, castrate our creativity, pollute our productivity, and poison our potential. Systems have been set up so that we won't dare have visions of grandeur or even think that we can escape a second-rate life. Systems have been designed to keep us from being exceptional. They have been erected to prevent us from reaching our goals. Rules have been set in place so that we would not think about being significant in society. So the systems have been created to try and keep us in our place. It was First Lady Michelle Obama that encountered a system that tried to suppress her goals of a bright future. Mrs. Obama recounts a story of how she was a senior class treasurer in her high school and had high aspirations in life. She saw her brother going to Princeton University, and she wanted nothing less for herself. However, her guidance counselor thought otherwise. She decided that my wish to go to Princeton was thinking too big, was reaching too high. Mrs. Obama revealed of her counselor, she said, I don't think you're Princeton material. The former first lady said that her counselor's statement felt like a punch to her. Well, she was wrong because the teen got accepted to Princeton and then went on to Harvard. And I might add, her book, Becoming, has sold over 10 million copies to date. See, that's not bad for someone that was thinking too high. See, my brothers and sisters, we must be relentless in our efforts to break through the ceiling of self-doubt and pity. We are better than our surroundings. We are better than the unfortunate things that may have happened in our life. We are better than the mistakes that we have made. We are better than the labels people try and place on us. We are better than the labels, look at this, that we place on ourselves. We are better and since we are better, we have to associate with better and strive for all that is better and refuse to settle for anything less. See, I know we weren't expecting better, but I'm ready to receive all that God has in store for me. I'm ready to receive every blessing and every miracle. And as the praise team said, I'm expecting great things. See, I want to put myself in a position where I can finally forbid the counterfeit and embrace the legitimate. I want to be able to say, Lord, I wasn't expecting this, but I'm ready to receive what you have in store for me. I'm ready to accept the blessing that has my name on it. See, I thought my life was about to go one way, but I'm grateful that you intervened and showed me something greater, showed me something more beautiful, showed me something more marvelous. I'm glad that you showed me things about myself that I did not know. See, you thought your life was about to go one way, and here comes God disrupting your thoughts, disrupting your life and showing you that he has greater. See, God is about to disrupt the path that you thought you were going to take just so that he can insert his path for your life. God is disrupting the status quo to reveal something that is unheard of. God is about to act up on your behalf. 
God is about to rearrange your plan for his plan. God is about to change your course just to complete your destiny. See, I know you thought you were about to go there, but he's about to send you over there. God is disrupting your agenda for his. God is going to manipulate the system to work in your favor. See, ordinarily it would work against you, but God has set it up to work for you. There has been a changing in the guard, and the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. God is going to flip the script just for you and just for me. God is going to move mountains out of your way. See, he's going to move it so that you can have the victory in Jesus. See, I know you weren't expecting much this year based upon all that has transpired last year, but last year is gone and we are in a brand new season. Do you believe that today? We're in a brand new season and I believe that God is setting us up for our next level blessing. I, I expect God to do something great and fantastic. I expect God to do something marvelous I expect God to do something that is mind-blowing. I expect God to do something magnanimous in my life. I expect nothing less than God's best for me, and I am expecting great things from a great God. So why not praise God in advance for all of the greatness that's coming your way? Why don't you give God glory for all the miracles that are going to take place in your house. Why not open up your mouth and say thank you in advance for what you're about to do for me. I know it's been rough, it's been tough, but God is still able to turn some things around. Someone shout hallelujah for your turnaround in God. Someone shout thank you Jesus for breakthrough hitting your house. Yeah, I wasn't expecting all of this. But I believe that God is making his rounds and blessings are in the atmosphere. See, the Bible says in verse number 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. Look at this, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And here he comes saying, greetings, greetings, Mary, oh favored one. Isn't it amazing that God sees something in you that no one else sees? When he calls you, he calls you the favored one. He, he doesn't doesn't call you out of your name. He calls you by your right name. You are the favored one. And, and he's not just blessing in one area, but he's blessing in all areas of my life. Matter of fact, if you sitting by me, you might as well watch out for a blessing because the favor of God is on my life. If you don't want to break through, I suggest you scoot over because God is working on my behalf. If you don't want your finances to increase, sit in the next row because God is manipulating some stuff for me. God is making his rounds and blessings are in the atmosphere. That's why I can't let everyone in my atmosphere. Yeah, I, I, I can't let everyone in my space. I, I just can't hang out with everybody because you just might contaminate my atmosphere. I, I don't work too hard to set the right atmosphere. And I'm not going to study you looking at me. And I know you're not studying me looking like you. So I'm going to focus on the right atmosphere so I can get what I need from God because I refuse to suffer in ways I used to suffer before. Before, so I'm setting the atmosphere and declaring that God is able. I'm declaring that I'm going to be the head and not the tail. You ought to learn how to set the atmosphere and declare that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. God is making his rounds and blessings are in the atmosphere. And see, God, God, God is addressing us by our name, and he's saying, oh, favored one. And see, I love it. God is not calling us what others have called you. See, others will call us no good. Others will call us worthless. But God is calling us favored. See, you ought to be careful what you say about me, 
because you might be saying something against God that has favored me. You, you got to be careful how you bouncing my name around in the atmosphere because I got angels that are watching over me. You, you ought to be careful how you text about me in your text messages because I got angels that's overseeing your phone and seeing what you said about me. And when you see me, don't show up no more. Just know I got some inside information about what's really going on. See, see, God... God is making his rounds. He's addressing me by my full name, and he's calling me the favored one. He says, but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this should be. Sometimes we're not expecting God to show up the way he shows, but shows up. But aren't you grateful today, church, that God shows up in unexpected ways, ways that you weren't even thinking about? Matter of fact, you weren't even praying about a certain thing, and God fixed it anyway. You wasn't even disturbed about a situation, and here comes the Holy Ghost coming in and giving you peace over every single thing that tried to disturb your peace. See, God has favored us. He hasn't favored us so that we could brag about it. He's favored us so that we could tell the world about it. So we could tell the world that God, if he's done it for me, he will surely do it for you. Because if you only knew the stuff that I went through, the mistakes I've made, the things I've said, the way I've acted, you would be shocked. Because God blessed me. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be praising God today. But I got to thank him that he did not give up on me. I, I got to thank him that he did not cast me away from his presence. I got to thank him for giving me not a second chance, but another chance. It says here, it says here, you are the favored one. Verse 30 says, and, the, and you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. See, I wasn't even looking for it, but God sought me out. See, that's how you know you're favored. When you're not even looking for a position and the people come looking for you so you can feel the position. You, you know you somebody special when heaven, when your name is being discussed to feel something that you're not even qualified to feel. But God is right there saying, pick them, pick them. They the one going to give me glory. They're, they're the one going to give me praise. They're the one that's going to do my perfect will. So I wasn't even looking for this, but God, he sought me out. And see, I know we chase after God, but isn't it something that God chases after us? Isn't it something that God overwhelms us with his presence? He overwhelms us with his glory, and he overwhelms us with his peace. The text says this, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign forever. I want to tell you what's in you is greater than what is around you. And see, you have no idea that you are about to give birth to something that no one in your family has ever given birth to. You have no idea that you're about to do some things that your family members couldn't even do. You're about to do some things that your friends have never even thought about doing. That's why you can't share everything with everyone. You just got to take it to the Lord in prayer and say, God, since you put it in my heart, you got to bless it. You got to manifest it. You got to bring it to pass because the truth is I don't know what I'm doing. But with your anointing, I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The truth is, I don't have as much education as people think I might have, but thank you for the wisdom that falls from on high and teaches me what I need to do. Am I grateful for the Holy Ghost today that teaches you the things that you need to know, the things that you need to do? Everybody else got a PhD in it, but I got the Holy Ghost in it, and it's working out for my good. I, I know you went to school for years. I'm not hating on you, but I went to God in prayer for years, and he worked it out on my behalf. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody my prayer was not in vain. My worship was not in vain. My praise was not in vain. My faithfulness was not in vain. God looked over the balcony of heaven and saw I beat the deacons to the church and he decided to give me a miracle. I ain't talking about y'all. I know y'all was here early. I was not know y'all. I ain't talking about But God knows he understands that we've been faithful. And he knows how to reward our faithfulness. And isn't it something that he shows up in a place that no one else would show up in? He shows up in Nazareth. He, he, see, see, God knows how to show up in your life when everybody else has walked out out of your life. Uh, isn't that amazing, God? Isn't that amazing, God, that God, he shows up right in the nick of time. When you feel that you have no one else to depend on, no one else to lean on, no one else to trust, he said, why don't you call me and I'll show up before you say amen. Don't you know God knows your thoughts from afar off? So before you bow your body and bend your head and say, our father, he's already right there saying, baby, I heard you before you even thought about it and I've come to see about your need. What's in you? It's greater than all that's around you. And Mary, she asks a legitimate question. She said, how is this going thing going to be? Because I'm a virgin. I, I don't know what I'm doing. He said, well, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to overtake you. And see, what's so interesting, God got upset with Zachariah because Zachariah had a wife. Mary didn't have her husband yet. She, she did not celebrate her wedding night yet, so God was able to use her. See, see, some folk need other human beings. All you need to do is partner with God and watch God turn it around. See, all you need to do is get connected with the Holy Spirit, and you don't need no outside help. You don't need no outside assistance. All you need to do do is look to the hills from whence cometh your help for your help cometh from the Lord you don't have to dial anybody up all you have to do is call on Jesus and he still what answers prayer all you got to do just a little talk with Jesus makes everything what church all right just a conversation with the savior of the world and he will flip the script just for you all you got to do is call it and he'll show up just call him see see you don't know this this is not a hookup this is a mighty move of God uh, this, this, this has nothing to do with my connections this is a mighty move of God this has nothing to do with the people I got in my phone this is a mighty move of God this has nothing to do with my degrees this is a mighty move of God do you believe God is moving in your life you don't know how he's doing it you don't even know why he's doing it but you jumped up this morning and say God I'm thankful that you're doing it for me God I'm grateful that you're doing it for me and he gives her some encouragement he said he said your cousin Elizabeth who they call barren is pregnant too see look at God God is trying to tell you what other folks label God is giving a brand new name to what other folks named God is renaming it for his glory and he says and with God there is nothing that is impossible Oh, man. Oh, man. That's something to celebrate right there. I said, with God, there is nothing that is impossible. When you have God on your side, you can leap over mountains. You, you don't have to pray hard to move a mountain. Baby, put on your kicks and leap over the mountain. And God will give you the strength that you need. God, man, when God is in control, there is nothing and no one that can stop you for what you you're about to get into next my God I know I know last year we had plans we had ideas we had agenda but don't you know God gave us about nine months of rest to get us set up for a brand new year God gave us an opportunity to rewrite rethink reimagine so that we can re-engage with the Holy One of Israel God gives us an opportunity so we can praise him more he gives us an opportunity so that we can worship him more. And she doesn't question God. She just said, Lord, let your will be done. See, that's a prayer 
right there. Lord, let your will be done. You know why you picked me, Lord, let your will be done. Lord, you know why you placed me for such a time as this, Lord, let your will be done. And there's somebody next to you that's celebrating what God's about to do in your life. See, I wasn't expecting all of this, but what I am expecting for God to do the impossible. Come on, give God praise this morning. Come on, let's give God glory this morning. Come on, God's going to do the impossible. God is going to do the impossible. Brother Ken, I know y'all just sung, but you, could you guys sing it again before you leave? Could we take three minutes of your time and sing that again, expecting great things? I know you run into a next church, but give me three minutes and sing that song because we need to expect more of what God is going to do. Is there one today that doesn't know the Lord? You really weren't expecting anything. But after hearing the praise team, after hearing the word, you are now expecting something great. You should come and give your life. Three voices. I, I, I'm expecting great. Come on, if you're expecting anything Say, great today. I'm, expect I'm expecting great Is there one? Is there Say, one? I'm expecting. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Come on, all year, all month, all day. I'm expecting I'm them. expecting great things. Give God praise, for yet there is room at the cross. Come on, let's pray. Father, we love you, and we bless your name. We lift up the bereaved families today. So many people have lost loved ones. We pray for the family of that great icon, Cicely Tyson. We pray for her family and friends, and we thank you for 70 years dedicated to her craft. We pray for all those family members that had to say farewell to husband, wife, son, daughter, cousin, friend, confidant. We pray that you would strengthen them in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you would have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up, oh God, uh, the best family and we lift up Deacon Jonas best as he is there in South Carolina for his cousin's homegoing. God, strengthen him. Be with him and use him to your glory. Father, we pray that you touch everyone online and in the sanctuary. Father, we pray that you bless them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And Father, no matter what comes their way, remind them to always expect something great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Come on, everybody. Say, I'm expecting. I'm expecting great In my life, in my life, you do great things. You do great things. Oh, in my home, in my home, you do great things. You do great things all around. God praise. Let's receive our offices as they come to receive our tithes and offering. We are expecting great things from our God.
Amen. Praise God. Come on, let us lift our offering high. We are grateful to God for all that he is doing, all that he shall do. To those that are still worshiping from home, you can send in your offering to P.O. Box 449, Hartford, Connecticut, 06141, or give Lafay Shallow Baptist Hartford, and you could give in that fashion. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you for every gift and every giver. Thank you, we, Lord, we thank you for these, your people, that continue to minister to this church, that continue to serve this church from the depths of their heart. Father, we bless your name today. For we know, O oh God, give, and it shall be given back to us. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man give unto our bosom. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Let us be directed by our usher. forget the noonday in-person Bible study on Wednesday, 6.45 prayer, 7 p.m. virtual Bible study. And we have heard of our announcements, all the meetings, upcoming events. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen? Amen. Gracious Father, we love you and we bless your name. We thank you for this worship service. We thank you for all that has transpired. We pray, God, that when we leave this place, God, that you have been given all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Give us safe travel and mercy. Allow us to reach home and find everything in order. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever and ever. And the church sings together. 